Welcome back to the Jack and Glenn channel. I'm Jackie. I'm her husband, Glenn. <laughs> he started it right this time. Yeah. Okay. And we're here with our Married at First Sight review. Yeah, Married at First Sight review. This episode, I mean, last week's episode left us in a cliffhanger because I guess we ain't gonna start with Matt and, and Amber, but Matt didn't come home. So it was a lot of anticipation ready for this episode to see what will happen next. Jamie and Elizabeth with an argument last week and it the previews make you think that they was gonna get a divorce and Jamie and Elizabeth were gonna leave, but you know, the show was a little little bit interesting, so Okay, so I know we said we weren't gonna start with Matt and Amber, but let's start with Matt and Amber. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I think that's like the easiest thing to deal with up front. Alright, let's start with Matt and Amber. So Matt stayed out all night long. All day too. All day long. He didn't pick up his phone to call. He didn't pick up his phone to text. And so Amber's paranoia kicks in. And her abandonment issues kick in. And she goes through his drawer and oh, look what I found. It was his wedding ring. <laughs> you, oh, she's even more suspicious now. Like you didn't call, you didn't text, you didn't answer when I called, you didn't reply to my text and you left your ring. What in the world? Yo, he left this ring, and I was like, as a man, I'm like, that's a big no-no. You don't take that off. And his excuse was he had to work out, or he expected to come back and put it on. Um, you can shoot hoops with your ring on. You can yes. lift weights with your ring on. Absolutely. You can do crunches with your ring on. Absolutely. You can uh, ride the bike with your <laughs> the ring on. You can go to the elliptical with the ring on. Any exercise that you want to do, you can do with your ring on. You can box out in the post with your ring on. <laughs> <laughs> You're a ball player. You can dunk with your ring on. I'm just saying. You already know how your wife is. You shouldn't have took the ring on. Then you put it in a drawer where she could find it. At least put it in the car. But not, I mean, putting it in a drawer is like he was hiding it too. That that looked kind of suspicious too. Yeah. Like, well, it wasn't I, much in the drawer. No, it wasn't. <laughs> so, But, okay, so when he does come home, Amber's like cuddled up in the corner. In a fetal position. You didn't call. I was worried about you. It was like you left me. Oh, oh, let's back I up, found back up your quick. ring. Back up. She didn't go to work. <laughs> oh yeah, she was in such a way she couldn't even go to work. Which I I understand. You know, you go to school. She she's a middle school teacher, right? Yeah, she's an English teacher. You go to school, and uh, those kids are gonna eat you alive. <laughs> oh, Miss Amber got an issue today. Yeah, nice. so I can understand that. You know, she felt like she couldn't mask her emotions at work. So I understand that, but. So he comes in, and I feel like, I mean, Dr. Pepper came and talked to them, and Dr. Pepper was right on the same lines I said. She was so nice. Like, he just explained it away. I'm, I'm used to hanging out with my friends, and I forgot, you know, about, basically about checking in. You know, I didn't think about the other person. And, and all I kept telling my husband was, bro, you never had a serious girlfriend? You never had a girlfriend before that... You give her the courtesy of saying, hey, I'm hanging out with my boys. That's that's strange to me. Like, who does that? I don't know, but if you, uh, all the guys watching and be watching this, you may want to be married to Amber because she ain't giving the business. I know she in my house. She did not. In my house, I would have caught the business to going out for 24-7. Oh, my gosh. Dr. Pepper said so, too. She was like, Amber let you off easy because I wouldn't have. Mm -mm. Yeah. He came in like, what's up? Like, they were nonchalant. Like, oh, it was yeah. Like, he walked in like, what's up? I know like, what's up? How you doing? How you doing? What? 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 what, what how I'm doing? How I'm doing? Okay. Let me tell you how I'm doing. She didn't, she give didn't do that. She didn't do that. I think she's just happy to be married, to have somebody in her life. And I think that's where she doesn't want to make him upset, doesn't want to make him mad because she doesn't want him to run out or leave. So she doesn't want to be argumentative. She doesn't want to be, um, she's real passive about the way that she handled him. Even when Dr. Pepper was talking to her, she kind of made excuses for him. I don't want him to get in trouble. Yeah, you can't make excuses <laughs> for him. What? He was wrong, 24-7. At least send me a text. I'm at my boy's house. I fell asleep on Johnny's couch. Um, I'm okay. Um, anything to be like, you know what, my phone died, you know, borrow Johnny's phone, this is Matt, um, I'm okay, I'm at my, uh, Johnny's house, I'm on the couch, and I'm using Johnny's fictitiously, don't know his friend's name, but I'm at so-and-so's house, at least communicate, all she wants is communication, and he hasn't been able to do that, so mm -hmm. that's where her anxiety comes in and her abandonment issues come in, and Dr. Pepper was right, yo, he should have caught, he didn't think about her, and when, she, when he tells his story about, you know, he left when he was 16, he went to boarding school, and he didn't really have a family, so he's been living out of a suitcase, for since he was 16 years old. Yeah. 
So he's used to picking up moving, not answering to anybody and, and doing his own thing since he was 16. So that's what his issue is at. And he got to realize it's not about me anymore, but it's about we. But I still say, through that all, like you didn't have no girlfriend. And so I, I take it any girlfriend he had or serious relationship, they must have just dealt with it. He didn't have to be accountable to anybody. That's he, crazy. I mean, no accountability. So there's no accountability for him to be in relationships. And plus, remember, when it's time, maybe when it got serious, it was time for him to go to a new basketball team. It was time for him to leave college. Or That's true. It was time for him to leave. So they didn't want to deal with the long-distance relationship issue. So it was almost like, okay, I did with you for a couple months, and I got to bounce. Yeah. So. That's true. Well, um... I don't really have too much more to say. Nah, about but then Matt they, they no nah, Matt and Amber, but then they went to Doc, they gave him an assignment. Yeah, they had to do a fishbowl assignment, and the fishbowl assignment was they had to pick different things in the fishbowl and pull out, well, you know, what kind of sexual things, different questions. And the question came up, said, "What was the most thing that you regret in our marriage?" And Matt apologized, so I'm not gonna let's leave that out. He he apologized, he did. He and he did. really felt sorry that he put her through that, and you know, and and. And he, he, I think he really likes Amber, but I think he doesn't know how to show it. Yeah, he just doesn't know how to show and it. Or express it. So I think he likes Amber, but their fishbowl experience was good. She said, asked her what her fantasy was. She was like massaging, you know, massage table. And, and was, Matt had the massage table at the end. That was sweet. He made, he listened and he, he didn't wait to act on it. No. He said, let me go ahead and strike while the iron's hot. And she was like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, and that's why it shows you that he does like her, he does care, he does want to make her happy, he doesn't want to hurt her. Yeah. And it also came up what was one of her fears, and her fears is that we're getting divorced. Right. And, and so she has that fear. So he knows what she likes, she knows her fears, and so we'll see in the next couple of weeks if Matt can go ahead and, um, you know, work on that and build and learn from his mistake. And that's what she told him, I don't want you to keep beating yourself up, and, and which means that he is kind of beating himself up for the issue, which shows that he cares. Yeah. So he's trying to make good and make right. Okay, so... So we, Matt, li Matt listened. He did. But there's another couple that didn't listen. But I wanna let's let's kind of uh, temper it. Let let's okay. go good bad good bad. All right, let's go to Dion and Greg. Oh, Dion Birth and Greg, I love them. Sex. Birthday sex. That is so inappropriate. <laughs> Greg got some birthday sex. He did. <laughs> she was like feeling. She was like, let me give you the best present that you could ever expect. I'm great. Yeah, I'm great. Put it down. And Dion. Open up literally and figuratively. figuratively. He said, Deanna blessed me on my birthday. Blessed bless me <laughs> on my he, birthday. And he, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. it. <laughs> he said it was good. He enjoyed it. Which is good for them because she said later on that it turned him her on when she saw him interacting with his friends. Because she got to see a different side a different of him. Si different she side got side to of see him. a different and side. And Greg was him. like, so that means <laughs> every time, the only time I can get it is when my <laughs> friends come over. <laughs> Which I like him because he's funny. His jokes, his jokes are funny uh, to me. But their relationship was good. We saw Greg take care of Deanna because she got sick. Yes. And he took care of her. And, you know, she was kind of embarrassed because she had the bubble guts, the BGs. Yeah. She had the bubble, <laughs> she had the bubble guts. guts. But he he brought her some medicine. He took her, he gave her dinner. Uh, he took care of the animals. He took care of everything for her, as a good husband should. You know, taking care of her, and and that's what she liked and appreciated. So she like you start to see her walls come down. They didn't yes. have much. They didn't have much in this this episode. Their their segments were limited in this episode. I, I think, think because been... it's going so smooth for them. And I told my husband, I said, I'm kind of because I know how TV is. It's reality TV, you know, and it's married at first sight. And I don't know. I, I'm scared there might be something. They haven't really had any major issues. It might be smooth sailing, but you know, TV be setting you up. I, maybe they got enough explosions with the other two. <laughs> with the other two. They're they, going to let Dion and Greg just chill. Just chill. But they chilled and then he took care of her and then they played the card game. Yes. <laughs> they they the played card. the card game. I was expecting there to be stuff, but they had to assign stuff to the cards. Right. A so hug, one card was hug, one was kiss. Then it was whole hands, hands, right? Yep. And then it was compliments. 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 And so Deanna lays, that was funny. She lays out, this card is for this. This one's for that one. This one for this one. And then we'll decide, is it, <laughs> do you give this many of that or do you do it for this many seconds? And so Greg's like, got it. He throws the card out, compliments. She was like, that is not compliments. That's not compliments. <laughs> That's like hold hands or something like that. So he, he was, was like, dang. He was ready to give compliments, but I thought it was nice that she came back with a compliment and it was 10. So it was a 10 of diamonds, I believe. And so she gave 10 compliments and the compliments that she gave Greg, 
it made him feel some type of way. He felt good because it was things, I thought it was things that, you know, you wouldn't recognize. The, the fact that he does pedicures and take care of his feet with her, the way he smiles. And, and the last one was the one that really they tested him. They had kind eyes. And they had a big heart. And that's, yeah. what, that's the one that he really loved, that, that he had a big heart. And so it was great to see them two just interact. And you can see the walls coming down. She's getting more comfortable. She's not like she was in the first five or six episodes where she had with Stonewall. That 10 years of not being in a relationship is coming back where she now starts to enjoy and begin to like the relationship that she's in and with Greg. I really like their interaction. I just, they're so sweet to me. Oh. I almost feel like it's, um, Remind it me puts me up in the mind of um, Bobby and Danielle mm -hmm. from the previous season. They're just sweet, you know, just their relationship is very sweet. And um, I'm looking for great things from Greg and Deanna. The only thing I would say is she played my brother so bad. She did. When he was like, you know, when they were talking about the sex thing. And she was like, I mean, if we could do it every other month, that'd be good. Just that one time a month, it'd be explosive. And he was like, what? Well, it's like going to your favorite <laughs> restaurant every other month. That's not going to happen, Greg. Bro, uh, Deanna, um, I don't know how that's going to turn out for you. Every other month, bro, I ain't going to be able to handle that. I'm sorry. He liked a little bit more off than that. Every other month, mm. But she was like, okay, I could, I could deal with if it was more than every other yeah. month. So, I that, so, it's good that they're on the same page. If she want to stay married, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> it's good that they're on the same page with that. So, okay, so we'll go from them dealing with... Iris and Keith. Their, oh, okay. So, we're going to leave the explosion for the end. Leave the explosion okay. for the end. Iris and Keith, again, just, they're sweet. They're sweet to me. They're sweet to me, and they're having to deal with... I think we're seeing stuff in this season that we haven't seen before. So, as an, as newlyweds, as strangers that got married, they have to deal with the death of a grandparent. Yeah, a close grandparent. Yes. And I felt like um, Keith took it in stride. He really did. Even when he was talking about it, you know, he was like, it was, it's hard for me to open up expose you know I had to do that with Iris and she was there for him she was there for him she was and I think you know him fighting back tears and thinking about his grandma he put in perspective look she did always wanted me to get married so she saw me get married she right. said so she met Iris and she liked it and so it's like she thinks I'm gonna be okay right and you know you know what God I thank you because they're religious people so he's gonna be okay he has somebody in his corner who look out for him so I really don't have to look out for him anymore and I think that's what Keith put in perspective like you know what Grandma was comfortable, she was good, she was happy, so she had to go. And I like the fact that Iris and her mom are still being involved, like a family should. Yeah. The family of your in-laws should be involved in your, um, you know, the, when you lose someone in your family. So they're real close and, and they're having breakfast. I like the conversation I have. I think this year people are communicating with, with Deanna and Greg and with Iris uh, and Keith. They're communicating very well with each other, sitting down at a table and, yeah. and having communication. And they're opening up and they're talking. Even when it was at dinner... And it was talking about her virginity and, and talking about, you know, was it a concern? And I think Keith is being very honest and open with her. But Iris, to me, has a problem. Now, I don't want to say not being right, but she's feel when situations are uncomfortable, she starts to unravel. Yeah, and you went to dinner, but before dinner, they had their fishbowl thing. Yeah. And that's what brought up the conversation at dinner. It's like when, when they got to the sexual questions, which I was like, you know... I understand they have to get into some enemy intimacy part because that's where they've been struggling. But also some of the questions I was like, <clears throat> considering you're giving it to Iris and Keith, I feel like some of those questions shouldn't have been in there or I don't it, know. It needs to make them talk about it. Like this question was, what is your favorite sexual position? And she was like, not applicable because it's not applicable. She like, know. I, which, which is good though, because it means she's probably never... I'm not saying never watched any dirty movies, never watched anything, so she may not have an imagination of what, what she would even like to try. I'm just saying what she would like to try. <laughs> I'm not saying that she has it, but you know. She said she's done other things, right. just not that. But other things had not been positions or things, so she don't know what it's like, what it feel like. Um, she may not even have an imagination of what it be. So then it came up, she asked Keith, what was his favorite position? <laughs> in my house we got a lot of laughter at this position I have teenage, I have teenage kids who happen to walk by while we were watching this and everyone in my house stopped because <laughs> he said I like doggy style I like doggy style so my teenage children start laughing so um <laughs> But they, they did, so he liked that shit. Like, well, I don't even know what that is. I basically, but what I'm I, not sure. But like Keith said, and, and I agree, 
her sexual immaturity is showing yeah. because she did say she's done in a previous episode she said she's done other things but those other things she doesn't associate it with the sexual act so when the question was like um what was the question about initiating initiate how you know do you get, initiate? how do you initiate how would you like to for it to be initiated Probably those things that she did would be the initiation, but she doesn't call it that because she never got to that right. point. She, can't correlate she doesn't two. understand that that the uh, making out or whatever else it might be that is the initiation for the sexual act. She's disconnected to the two because she doesn't she does she's never had sex before. So when it got to that point, she you know she cut it off or maybe she didn't get. That to the point where the Joker was <laughs> ready to go. The Joker. <laughs> he was ready to go. Or, or she, she was ready. Or she, she was ready to go because it, the intimacy she made Africa's correlated. She already made up her mind. You know what? We're not gonna have sex. So we're just gonna kiss. We're gonna hug. We do other things. But I'm gonna lock it off. But this is her husband right. now. So her husband is there now. So it's like okay, it's okay if it goes that far because my husband. I mean, I understand why she's guarded. It is an eight week. We gotta keep remember. It's an eight week experiment, right. and the fear in her mind is okay. If I give it to him, and if I give him my goodies, my candy dish, my whatever, whatever you want to call it, and it does not work out, then I just sacrificed twenty seven years. Twenty seven years holding out, holding out for a guy who don't love me. Right. And so that's where her biggest holdup is, and that's something that she's holding on to, and she don't want to feel like she's pressured to give it in. Because if she feels like she's pressured to give in and it doesn't work out, she'll be so disappointed. And I think she needs to see it from Keith's perspective, too. As much gravity as she feels with it, yeah. he does, too. There's a lot of responsibility. Like, what if I, I am the person that has, you know, her give up her virginity? And then I don't want her to think that it didn't work out because she gave it to me. Right. You know, it may be some other things that may, you know, could lead to them breaking up but that's a lot of responsibility be like, I'm, I'm the person that took her virginity but and and in the end i end up breaking her heart that's you don't want that to be her first experience but like she know? said too this is the world the world would know who the first person she had oh, sex yeah. with oh, millions yeah. of people would know that she've had sex and that's with only keith that's heavy for her and it, that's heavy for her the world would know the world kind of put a time stamp on it a date on it that she's had sex with keith and this is your first experience so i mean i don't know about you guys uh, not too many people know the first person I had sex with. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> Except for being that person. Well, you, because I told you. Right. But, um, but yeah, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Who was? No, stop. <laughs> don't do that. I hope she's not watching. I hope she's not watching this video. But if she is watching this video, make sure you subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> my husband was a virgin when we got back. No, it wasn't. No, 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 don't do that. Not that it was a bad thing. Not that it was a bad thing. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Okay, well, let's go to the Bombs Over Baghdad. <laughs> well, we got a lot of song references. Bombs Over, over Baghdad. Baghdad. Okay. Uh, Jamie and Elizabeth. OMG. Boy. These. I, I, to the left. They fight dirty. Oh my gosh. Well, we, it's terrible. We open the scene up and he's in one room. She's in another room and Dr. Pepper comes in. And she brings them together. And I think you noticed they were so disjointed. Oh, it was, it was like they were so separate in the in the talk because okay, Jamie was like my hus she said my husband said he wants to divorce me. Dr. Pepper was like, "Now you know that's a no-no." Mm -hmm. That's a no-no. So do you want to? And he was like, "No, I don't." It's like they just started throwing stuff out. Just throwing stuff out because they were mad. And it's not good. And Dr. Pepper gave us advice. Look, be honest, have communication, grow up. Both of you guys come in with gloves off like it's a bare knuckle fight and y'all just shooting for the knockout. You know, he told Jamie that he was wrong for trying to leave. Look, you got two bedrooms and a couch. Two bedrooms and a couch. Go go lay on one of those, but don't leave while you're angry and leave upset. Try to resolve it. And I think Elizabeth's issue is she don't want to try to resolve a problem. She doesn't want to make sure that she's wrong. Jamie's always wrong. And things start to irritate her. And she didn't know how to communicate with Jamie. The way she communicated with Dr. Pepper, like, I don't want to have uh, any more sex because I'm getting a UTI. Or I feel like I'm getting a UTI. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting a UTI, which I didn't know if medically could you feel that you're getting a UTI. I, I mean, know. you can, but uh, anyway. Yeah. I, I'm a nurse, but I don't want to get into that. It's, it's, 
<laughs> Are you not emptying your bladder, honey? <laughs> you yeah. can empty your bladder before and after. But anyway, um, yeah, and so Dr. Pepper talked to him, and they seemed to be receptive in the moment, but they were still sitting on the couch like this. Yeah, apart. They were holding hands, but you could tell they were still disjointed. Right. And then Dr. Pepper leaves, and they go walk the dogs. And they go walk the dog in the park, and they're having a good walk, but... Jamie did something somehow where the dogs were, well, Elizabeth brought up a conversation about sex again, and she perceived Jamie to take it out on the dogs and be rough with the dogs. And you don't do that to my babies because they're my dogs and don't take Would out Would you drag end. somebody's two-year-old two -year around the way you were doing my dog? And he was nice and calm. <laughs> but... She blew it was almost the... kind of passive aggressive. Like he comes off kind of passive aggressive. I know he wasn't trying to be, but no, nah, he was he just saying he was, that he was taking the advice of Dr. Pepper. Like, look, let's talk about it. I he wasn't doing that to the dog. They told us to be kind to each other, speak right. kindly, and communicate. Okay. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I tried to do. She grabbing her bag. I'm going to my apartment. He said, "What well, Dr. Pepper told us not to leave." And I, I don't care yeah. who said what. I'm leaving. I need to be in my own space. Dr. Pepper said, "Mind you." She was more concerned about the dogs than the dogs were concerned about Jamie. Which the dogs were still loving on Jamie, still holding Jamie. Listen, that was the funniest thing my husband said during the episode. He said she cared more about how the dogs was dragged than the dogs do. Because dog he's care. on the couch and the dogs are just laying all over him. They do not care. They don't care. And so she cared. But then she finally, she stayed in her room. He's staying on the couch. He like my toothbrush in there. She brought the toothbrush to him, which <laughs> and she know. was like sleeping your underwear because you do that anyway. anyway. Don't come in the room with me. So they had a conversation, and then she woke up the next morning, wanted to leave again, but then she was more calm, and they had a conversation with them. I think they need to separate from it, and not away from each other's homes, but and within the house if it's large enough, calm down, and then come back and revisit. The situation, not things that happened weeks ago, but things that happened within that day. And was like Dr. Cal said a couple episodes, be naked, but don't have to be naked when you're angry. Right. And Dr. Pepper said that to them, too. You all need to talk about the issue at hand. Now, it wouldn't be OK for you to bring up what she did during the honeymoon at this point. That's not going to be productive for you all. But you need to speak about what's going on at that point in time. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said, too. For her to be so explosive, she kept stressing the fact that it was three hours after Dr. Pepper left. You shouldn't have been that mad still. And then retain. And then she gets the next one. I don't even know why we was mad at each other. I laughed so hard. He was like, me neither. Y'all lying. Stop <laughs> lying. Either y'all lying or y'all need to get mentally checked because they don't. Listen, they don't that was my question. I was like, I, I ain't, just listen, do they do a mental illness, mental health check? Because to me, Melissa is like, Elizabeth. I mean, <laughs> where I get Melissa from? Well, we know Melissa that needs some help. But anyway, <laughs> Elizabeth, <laughs> I'm leaving that in. So don't keep, keep going. <laughs> Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Who's Melissa? <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, I'm surprised. Elizabeth needs some help. <laughs> and she does because she, 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 to me, she seems like she's little, she, she, she real unravels real quick and she's yeah. little, she jumps back and forth in and out. Uh, one time she wants to be sexual. She doesn't want to be sexual. Now she doesn't want sex. I think their problem is they don't know what intimacy, intimacy is without having sex. And see, that's the one thing that I feel like um, Dr. Pepper didn't really get to with right. them that the other expert would have. That I felt, me, I felt like Jamie was saying... When they were talking about inti when he talked about intimacy, he was he wasn't talking about sex. He was like intimacy, like let me go back to the last season. I want to be sexual, intellectually stimulated. Yeah, he's not Will. <laughs> he, it's not as extreme as Will, but he's like I want to be intimate, like intimate. I heard uh, some marriage um, counselors or whatever they talk. It's into me see. Yeah. So he wants to see into her. He just doesn't want to be in her. Right. I mean, and I think that's what he was saying. And to me, that, that completely got missed. Yeah. That he wasn't just talking about... He, I mean, he made, she, she said it like, absolutely. That's what he was talking about. But I kind of got the feeling that he was talking about, I want to be intimate with you. I want to know you. I want to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, and his thing is... It could be holding hands. It could be cuddling. It could just be brushing up against them. We know that looking at his love language is the light language of touch. Yeah. He likes to be touched. And he, he said, I feel like he was saying, I don't have no problem with the sex. Right. 
I'm not saying we gotta negate that, but can we add the other That's stuff true. with it? And then watching um, Mary at first sight unfiltered, he said he they have sex. He liked to have sex five or six times. But a week. Amber said the same thing. Amber said the same thing. She like was she like, every time I times, see you. I want to have sex. So <laughs> maybe him and Amber should have got together. But anyway, they want to have sex five or six times uh, a week. So that's his, his intimacy. So that's his thing there. And so, But these two, but towards the end, they've gotten their stuff together. I, I like the fact that they did, they talked about it. And as much as that morning, she woke up with the intent that I'm going to leave. I go yeah. to my own space. In that moment, they were able to get to a resolve and say, you know what, I'm not going to leave. I, I'm, I'm going to stay here and we'll talk about it. And then they did their little exercise where they were blindfolded and had to answer questions, which made her, made her real vulnerable. And she answered the questions with love and respect. And they just need to, with them, I think they need to learn how to communicate yeah. with one another. And if they learn how to communicate with one another and listen to one another, they'll be better. Um, I'll tell you one thing, Elizabeth cannot dance. Um, <laughs> I'm not talking about anybody because I'm not the best dancer, but her... Um, she gave him that sexual dance. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Strip tease. Can I say it? Yeah. She said he had basic Caucasian sex. <laughs> she had basic Caucasian dance. Yeah. Can I say that? <laughs> you, can say, you can say that. But that's what she did. So she had her. If he wanted to come back, if he wanted to come back at her, he can say that. Um, <laughs> he, he but could. her dance moves were not. But and I like how Lifetime added some music to it, <laughs> to try to make it look like she was on beat. Yeah, whoever that video production guy is, great job, <laughs> great job adding the music to it, it to bad. stay on beat with her. But anyway, uh, man, that's our review for Married at First Sight this week. Let us know what you think. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let us know what you think. We'll have a question up uh, that will be pinned to uh, our page. Can Please I ask the a question. question now, though? Ask the question. Tell us what you thought about the moon water oh. <laughs> and the, the crystals and the... I don't know if I would drink that moon water, but I don't think I'll drink the he moon saged, water. She, she saged him again. Yeah, she did a whole seance situation. <laughs> it was not a seance, but... She, she, she did a whole... I don't know what she is, but she did a whole... She's into Just let us earth. know what you think. It was it was different. It, it was, was different. Jamie liked it because we got him the intimacy that he needed. So, so let us know what you think about that. <laughs> let us know what you think in the comment section below. And once again, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell notification. And we'll see you next week. Of course, y'all see that we're on location right now. Doing a little R&R. &R, so, uh, we'll see you next week on, <laughs> on, on the Jack and Glenn channel. Bye. Bye. Bye.